Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we have an exciting video for all you Need for Speed Heat fans out there. In this video, I'm gonna talk about Unite Mod 3.5 for Need for Speed Heat. This mod enhances your gaming experience by adding new features and improvements to the game. Before we dive into the installation process, let's talk about what Unite Mod brings to the table. This mod created by a talented team of developers, introduces new gameplay mechanics, visual enhancements, and much more. It's a truly game changer for Need for Speed Heat. Mods may not work with EA Play and Xbox Game Pass subscription version of the game. To ensure a seamless modding experience, it's crucial that you purchase or already own the game on either EA Desktop or Steam. Make sure you have the game on EA Desktop or Steam and launch it normally before diving into the modding process. To get started, you'll need to join their Discord server. In the description below, you'll find a link to the server. Joining the server will give you the access to the latest versions of Frosty Mod Manager, which is essential for installing Unite Mod. Once you are in the server, head over to the Frosty Updates channel. There, you can download the latest version of Frosty Mod Manager. Simply extract the contents of download zip file using any extraction software of your choice. You'll need to download the Data Path Fix tool to ensure the smooth functioning of mods. The Data Path Fix tool is crucial, especially if you are playing the game on Steam. The Data Path Fix is no longer required for those who own the game on EA Desktop, so you can skip this step. Mods will work by just adding them into the Frosty Mod Manager and press Launch in the Frosty. To make sure the data path fix runs with no issues, we advise you to disable the in-game overlay in EA Desktop. To disable the in-game overlay, follow the steps I'm doing. In EA Desktop, click on the drop-down menu on the top left and go into Settings. From the Settings, go to the Application and scroll down until you see the in-game overlay and disable it. To begin. Click on the provider link in the description. Once you are on the download page, simply follow my steps. After the download is complete, locate the downloaded files on your computer. Extract the contents of the zip file using your preferred extraction software. Alright, now open up the Frosty Mod Manager and locate the plugins folder. Move all the files from the data path fix to the plugins folder. Now go back to the Frosty folder and right click on the Frosty Mod Manager. Then go to the properties and select compatibility tab. And check the box run as administrator. Then hit OK. If you have already tried to mod the game using Frosty, and if it was failed, you need to clear those files before modding again. Simply follow my step. Open the Frosty folder, go to Cache and delete all files in the folder. If there is none, just ignore this step. Locate the installation directory of the game and delete the mod data folder. If there is none, just ignore this step. Type run on search bar and open it. Then type this and hit OK. I'll mention this in the description below. Then delete the Frosty folder in the pop-up window. And finally, clear the recycle bin as well. Let's proceed to the next step. Open up the Frosty Mod Manager. 
Once the mod manager is open, you will need to select the game you want to mod. To automatically detect your games, click on the scan for games option. If your games are not automatically detected, you can manually find them using the new button. When using the new button, navigate to the location of your games in either your Steam or EA desktop library. Once you have located your game's exe file, select it to add the game to Frosty Mod Manager. When setting up mods for Need for Speed Heat, the Frosty Mod Manager will ask you to provide an encryption key. Use the encryption key mentioned in the description below. In the meantime, as the setup progresses, take a moment to like the video. Your support encourages me to continue creating valuable tutorial content for you. After completing the Frosty setup, you can move forward to download the Unite mod. Proceed to the Project Unite server. Within the server, Navigate to the Unite Mods channel. Download the mod files by using the link provided in the Unite Heat channel. This link will be in the description as well. Extract the content in the zip file using your preferred extraction software. Let's break down the modding process into three primary approaches. Standard mod pack, story mod pack, online mod pack. If you have finished the story, you are free to use the standard FB pack. It's time to apply the mods. With the mod manager interface open, click on import pack button and select the standard FB pack files you have just downloaded. The FB pack should automatically apply the mods in the mod manager as well as already placing them in the correct loading order. Make sure the mod load order is set to list. Your night mod should always be at the top. As you can see here, this is the correct way to set the mod order. From the handling mods, you can choose only one. As well as from the stance mod, you can choose only one. Any optional Unite or non-Unite mods go below what listed below. To import a FB mod file, click on the Import Mod button and locate the files. You can only use one speedometer mod and four skybox mods. One for midday, one for sunrise, one for overcast, and one for the night. Before you launch the game, make sure your PC's operating system language is set to English. If not, Rusty may throw errors and not work. You can always use these up and down arrows to rearrange your mods. Simply use the checkboxes to activate or deactivate the mods. And to remove applied mods, just click on the small cross icon. Simply press the launch button on the top of the mod manager interface and enjoy your game.
EMF mods do not work after pressing launch you might need to set your launch options to EA desktop or steam try both if it is not working If the game does not work after pressing launch, delete all the files as we did before. Verify your game files on Steam or EA Desktop. Then just start the modding process again. If you haven't completed the in-game storyline yet, it is recommended to use the story mod compatible pack. Otherwise, you might experience crashes while playing through the story. Everything is same as the standard pack. I'll go through this quickly. You can always switch between these mod packs using this drop down menu. Finally, you can launch the game and play the storyline with no issues. If you want to play online, make sure to use the online pack. This way, you will play the game safely. Just follow my steps to set the mods and launch the game. And that's it for today guys. If you found this video helpful, giving it a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. Before you go, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated with more content like this. If you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to comment down below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.